Greetings YouTube and welcome to part 2 of the League Sovotan Army Set Build and Paint. This video will feature squat trikes, um, I mean Hernkin Pioneers. So let's get into it. I have all the sprues, bases, and instructions all laid out. Following the instructions, I will be building 3 sets of bike chassis. I start by using hobby clippers and clipping out all the parts that I need. Next, using my knife, I clean mold lines off of the parts. Then after that, putting everything together with super glue. Again, I'm doing the set of three. So at the end of this process, I should have three bike chassis fully built up. As I mentioned in my first video, I do everything fully assembled. In this case, even for riders. Here, I am super gluing the rider in place. I feel it saves a lot of time when you paint because you don't have to paint the parts that you can't see. One of the bikes gives you an option of a high last rotary cannon or ion beamer. If you want to be able to switch these out, you should magnetize. I will admit that magnetizing does take a lot of time. So this is an optional step. For this, I'm going to be using small magnets, specifically one by two millimeter round magnets. On the pintle mount, I'm removing some material, about one millimeter off of it. The magnet is going to occupy this one millimeter space. So I have to get rid of a little bit of material, as you can see here with the pairing motion on the knife. Then I apply a little bit of super glue. I peel off one small magnet and then I carefully place it on the pintle mount like this. Now this part is somewhat optional, but I decided to also magnetize the arms of the gunner. These areas here on his arms are where they would interface with the weapon. I am again slowly paring off the material in that area, carefully of course, and I will be placing magnets there as well, similar to what I did on the pintle mount. Here you can see all three magnets, two on the arms and one on the pintle mount. Just like the rider before this, I'm going to go ahead and super glue the gunner onto the step pads and two cables on the bike. I have found that it's easier to place the rider in position first before the arms. After that, I put some glue on the shoulder and a little bit on the pintle mount. And then I bring the arm up. I basically attach it to the pintle mount first and then onto the shoulder. And then I do the same thing for the other arm. Now the magnets are going to mount to tiny sheets of steel like this, which I will cut up with this sheet metal cutter. You can get sheets of steel, thin ones like this, by cutting up a dollar store baking pan, Altoid tin, or something similar. Next, I cut them up into little squares, around two to three millimeters for each square. Make a handful of these for the next step. Once you have fully assembled the guns, take some super glue and put it at the bottom of the gun and along the sides. Then, grab some of those little metal pieces and slowly apply them onto the bottom and to the sides of the gun, like so. These will be the areas where the magnets will attach to. Be sure to do the same thing for the other gun as well, using the same method. Now you should be able to take either gun and put them in those magnetized mounts that we made earlier. Now only one screen right here came with the guns, so I could either magnetize it or just chop off the attachment features on the other gun. So one gun will look like it doesn't have the screen at all, and the other one will. It's just a slight modification that really nobody will notice. Here is the first Pioneer fully on its base and fully magnetized. I continue batch building, 
the other two pioneers, putting them on bases. Now they're ready for paint. It's time to whip out the airbrush and start priming. Now unlike my first video, I'm going to actually use black primer this time. And you will see why in a little bit. Now with an airbrush, spray the black primer into every corner of the model. One of the big advantages of priming black is if there are areas you can't reach during the regular painting process, it will just look black, like shadow. This is actually a pretty big time saver because you don't have to get paint into every little corner of the model. If you decided to magnetize your guns, remember to prime those black as well. Now I'm going to share a technique that I use in order to get silver parts painted. I combine 50% of Army Painter Gunmetal, one of my favorite metallics, with 50% of Airbrush Flow Improver. Make sure to stir the solution together completely so that everything is fully combined. Now with an airbrush, spray the silver onto the model where you want it to look silver. The reason why I like this method is that it's able to get into very hard to reach places. For instance, the undercarriage of the bike, like you see here. I'm able to get into areas where if I had used a brush, it would have been a pain to get to. Also, you might notice that I'm not terribly concerned about overspray. This is because once you start brushwork, you can just paint over the overspray areas. Here is the silver fully sprayed on. You can see that the undercarriage not only has coverage, but also has a little bit of a shadowing effect. Now let's start with the brushwork. I begin with Barbarian Flesh and I paint over all the exposed skin areas. Now I start to apply the main base color, which is yellow. It will go on the breastplates and also a lot of the panels on the vehicle. The reason I didn't spray on the yellow base paint this time is because it would have oversprayed onto the silver and that would have ruined the work I did there. So instead, I had to resort to a brush to get the yellow on. Everything is fully assembled, but I have no issues getting into the deep areas with my brush. I have found that areas that I cannot get my brush into, I also can't see. And if you can't see it, you don't have to paint it. That's one of the reasons why this method saves a lot of time. If you remember, in the part 1 video, I mentioned that I usually just single coat. However, with this demonic yellow, as you can see, it is splotchy if you only put on one coat. So for this particular color, and some light colors that I lay on top of dark primer, I tend to at least double coat. My next primary color is Army Green, which I will apply on the anti-grav pads front and rear. This color also goes on the pant legs. The trench coats for the bikers get oak brown, which is a deep, rich brown. I put the lighter monster brown on the fur along the top of the trench coats. Now switching to dark stone, I paint the boots, the pads, and the gloves. The last brown that I use is leather brown, which works perfectly with the shotgun sheets, the backpacks, and anything else that needs to be that leathery look. For hair color, the sky is the limit. I stuck with mainly orange, dark, and light browns. Next, I switched to Void Shield Blue, which I used on the headlamps, the little lamps on the sides, and also for goggles, screens, and here you notice, even though it's a tight fit, I'm able to fully place color down on the screen that's on the dashboard of the bike. To break things up a little bit and create some interest on the model, I add some orange on all the marker lights front and rear. 
Another benefit of using black primer is that you don't have to paint the color black anymore. If the surface is black, just keep it that way. And now you can do a light dry brush of uniform gray in order to highlight those black parts. If you have magnetized your guns, be sure to dry brush those as well. One final accent is the white stripe, which I will add to the instrument panel area, to the front cowl, and the front fender, all to give the model a little bit more of an interesting look. Now at this point, everything should be fully painted and ready for washes. Starting with flesh wash, I apply them to the exposed skin areas and onto the hair. Now I switch to strong tone for the rest of the model. I would like to point out that since there's a lot of flat and open surfaces on the bike, you can see me tracing the strong tone wash onto the feature lines of the vehicle, not really smothering it all over the vehicle. The reason I do that is so that it doesn't make everything too dark. When it comes to the occupants, however, I treat them just like I treated infantry in the first video. I put a generous amount of wash on them. Moving back to the yellow body panels, I begin tracing again. Like I mentioned before, this wash tends to make surfaces look a little bit darker and I didn't want the yellow to look too dark. Once the wash is dry, I reapply a little bit of white to the stripes in the front. If any wash had intruded into the stripe area, this takes care of it. Moving on to the eyes, I use the same technique I used in the first video. I apply white paint with my smallest brush into the eye sockets. Then I use a toothpick dip it in black, and mark the pupils in the eyes. On to the decal application. I use microset on the areas that I want to put the decal, transfer the decal onto my brush, and then apply it to the area that I want it on. After it is on, I push it into position with my brush. I decided to put the symbols for the Trans Hyperion Alliance on the side fender and put a number marker on the front fender. I move on to basing. Here I apply Elmer's glue in generous strips on the base. Using an old brush, I go ahead and spread the glue all around the base, making sure everything is covered. The bases for these bikes are really big, so I applied the basing material over a plastic container. As you can see, I'm sprinkling the basing material onto the base and whatever falls over falls into the plastic container. I can then collect the overflowed material once I'm done basing. Since this is a bigger base, it really looks pretty empty if nothing else goes on this. So to decorate it a little bit, by keeping it simple, I put a few dollops of Elmer's glue on the base, spread it out with a brush, and then apply this grass-like basing material onto it. This creates the appearance of tufts of grass that spruces up the base a little bit, but doesn't take up much time. Here they are, the Hernkin Pioneers, aka Squat Trikes. All done. I usually varnish my models after I'm done to protect the paint job. Thank you so much for watching this two-part video and if you like what you saw, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks again and see you soon.